CataractCoach.com, Resident Week, Pseudo Exfoliation, Good Dilation, usually means good zygomatic support. Let's watch this anonymous resident who's operating here. So making a side, side port incision there, paracentesis, looks like there are two of them, one on each side, tripan blue dye. We don't typically stain a lens like this. I know residents like to. It's just the tripan blue dye is really not needed if you have a good uh, view anyway. There's a beautiful red reflex. It does help to stiffen the lens capsule, make it a little bit less elastic, so I get why people like it, but it does incur a cost. Here in the USA, you're looking at about $60, six zero US dollars for one um, dose or one vial of tripan. And so let's see, the Rex is starting off the resistatome, fixating the eye. You can see with the 0.12 or Calibri forceps in that left hand, you got to be careful with this because you're going to induce a subconjunctival hemorrhage in some of these patients, and that's going to take away a little bit from the patient experience. I know it's not going to affect the visual outcome at all if there's subconjunctival hemorrhage, but it does take away from the patient's experience. So there's a Rexus, beautiful Rexus, by the way. And now let's see some hydrodissection here. So hydrodissection, tapping the nucleus. So it looks like there's really good zonular support. I don't see any issues there. There was no wrinkling of the anterior lens capsule. Things look pretty stable. And again, it's good dilation. So though this is a pseudoexfoliation case, luckily it's on the easier part of the spectrum in, in terms of how pseudoexfoliation is. And a uh, good one to cut your teeth on. I like that idea. And let's see the technique here. So cleaning up a little bit, a little groove down the middle. Okay. So maybe a stop and chop. Let's see, finishing in that groove, good depth there. That'll probably do it. And then a crack, beautifully done, and propagating the crack. Take your time and propagate that crack all the way through. Make sure you really have two complete hemi-nuclear pieces there. And so now, I'm not sure if it's 100% the way through, but let's see what's next. A little more grooving, okay, because you didn't get it fully cracked, but there we go. Now you're looking to be much more separated. And now let's see again what's going to happen here. Go careful. So you can see it's not that dense of a nucleus. And if you go through the periphery of the nucleus with the Faker probe, you can pop that capsule, right? Remember the endonucleus, the center of the nucleus is denser. The peripheral nucleus out where the equator is, is a lot less dense in almost every case of nuclear sclerosis. And as a result, you got to be very cautious when you're putting the probe towards the equator. You don't want to put a whole lot of phaco energy. So now let's see another chop, chop. But the problem is now, if you look, there's very little cataract in front of the phaco probe, but look how much is underneath the phaco probe. That's the problem. See, it's sub-incisional. You have the whole half that's sub-incisional. So take this thing out. Let's get that other half that's sub-incisional. Let's get it rotated around and pushed around. So you want to keep the phaco, the phaco tip in a good position so that the nuclear pieces are in front of the phaco tip so they're easily accessed. And so here again, to the, between the phaco probe and the chopper, there's a big chunk of nucleus there. You want to bring that forwards, get it up. Don't, don't go dig in the back. No, 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 that's high risk, high risk, high risk. Don't, don't want to do that. Grab those tiny little pieces and put the probe out there. No, those will naturally come. You don't have to chase them. What I do is get that quadrant, that's, that quadrant, bring that up. And now chop in the safe position, give a little bit of flow there with the phaco energy, and then it'll all come down. You don't have to chase the little pieces. You can just actually twist the phaco probe in your hand. Twist it a little bit. That'll change the fluidic currents within the eye and cause the pieces to come to you. And so you don't have to do all the other uh, maneuvers there. You don't, you don't want to go fishing around, especially for these tiny little insignificant pieces that are very close to the lens capture bag. So let's see a bimanual cortex removal here. And there you go. Looking... Let's see, how are we going to do this? Let's get moving there. So doing it radially, in general for this bimanual, maybe try a circumferential approach. Pulling it radial is okay, but you're going to have to pull like so many of these little strips radially one at a time. Whereas if you go circumferential, you'll be able to get a few clock hours of lens cortex at once. So it'll be a lot more efficient. So instead of pulling radially, again, try circumferentially. And so there we go, cleaning this up. We've obviously sped the video up. And those pieces come up pretty nicely. Very nice. Yeah, the nice part with bimanual IA, yeah, you need an extra incision, but you do have a lot easier access to the full 360 degrees of the capsule bag. And you can obviously switch hands pretty easily. Let's take a look at what's happening next. And putting our bisco elastic in, filling up that capsule bag. And let's see what we're doing for the lens. Or maybe that was some BSS or maybe more bisco elastic. Yeah, probably there's bisco elastic. It's come out the incision now. So there we go. Now it's ready for the lens. Rex, this is beautiful. Good job. Deliver this lens nice and easy. Now bring the eye back to primary as you inject it. Don't keep injecting it with the eye pushed away from you. 
I get why you do that initially to get the phaco, the, the, the lens through the phaco incision, but once it starts out of the eye, flatten that out and get that iris back to being parallel to the floor of the room. And now here, bimanual IA. You may also want to just hydrate the incision too prior to doing the bimanual IA because then you don't have to use the main incision anymore. It's already done. So cleaning up, looking good. Beautiful overlap of the optic by that Rexus. So good job, young resident. You are doing a fantastic job here. I'm glad you sent the video in. Keep up the good learning. Let's see how you finish up the case here. And is there a little piece of nucleus there, a little chunk? Yeah, look at that. See, we saw it. Hopefully we'll get that out of the eye. Don't leave that in there. There you go. Just tap the main incision. It'll come out. All righty. Keep up the good work. Good learning. Good progress here. And stay tuned this week for even more great videos from Resident Week.